Welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Tim Kernan, the principal of Hopkinton's Elementary School. Welcome, Tim. Thank you so much for being the guest on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to speak with you. Well, I know you did a little bit of a news clip when you first started as principal over at Hopkins, and we yeah. appreciate that, but we're glad you're back with us today. Well, that was about a year ago, and, okay. and quite honestly, it, it was, um, it, it's been a blur. I completely forgot I did that clip. It's time been, goes um, fast. It time. goes fast, but at the same time, it seems like a, a long time ago, so it's, uh, it's a funny mix. Well, you've had a long, successful history with the school system here in Hopkington. Thank you. You were a teacher, president of the Teachers Association, mm -hmm. technology integration specialist, mm -hmm. and now principal of Hopkins School. Yep. So what inspired you to become an educator? Well, I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it sounds a little cliche, but I think it started before birth. Uh, both my parents were teachers. Um, so. Uh, they met as teachers and, um, you know, got married. Along came, you know, me mm -hmm. <laughs> several years later. And, um, you know, so I've been living a, you know, the, the routines and the ebb and flow of a, of a school culture and a school schedule and a calendar um, since the day I was born. So, um, you know, I grew up in a family where school and and learning uh, was was of the utmost importance um, my mom left teaching uh, when when they started a family uh, my dad continued on he was an assistant principal at uh, Bellingham High for um, well I can't even remember how many years mm -hmm. 20 years before his passing um, after uh, the kid you know my 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 siblings uh, were were older um, my mom went back to teaching, so teaching is kind of just in, in our blood um, as a family. We have mm -hmm. lots of aunts and uncles and cousins that are in teaching. It's just, it's part of uh, who we are as a family. Um, so for as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, when you're starting to make those decisions and think about those things in high school, um, it, there was nothing else for me. Uh, nothing else crossed my mind um, but being a teacher. So uh, that's kind of the path I was on even in high school. I wanted to, you know, when I was looking at colleges, mm -hmm. I wanted to find a strong education program. Um, you know, I just, I like working with kids. I always have. I like making a difference with kids. Um, you know, I, I like figuring people out. And that's part of who being a teacher is, is kind of getting inside people's heads and figuring out what makes, what makes them work and, and what makes them tick. And uh, with kids, it's then helping them to grow and, and improve as, as students and uh, grow as, as people. So um, I've always wanted to be an educator. It's just. Well, your background it's, has it's served in my you bones. well. Yes. Yeah. Your background has served you well, and yeah. your enthusiasm comes through loud and clear. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the, you being a, a technology integration specialist, mm -hmm. and one thing I did want to ask you is, since you're so familiar with technology and the role and the importance of it, how do you use that, and how does it serve you as principal of the school? Well, it, it, when I was a technology integration specialist at Elmwood School um, 14 years ago, something like that, you know, I think about those times and technology is so different now mm -hmm. and it's it's just amazing how the technology has grown. Um, you know, one thing that hasn't changed is how quickly uh, and how much faster kids ad adapt to oh, the yes. technology and how much quicker they pick things up and how unafraid they are with technology versus when you're working with adults with technology it's you know we need training we need classes we need you know uh, professional development we need to try things out and and there's always this this timidness and this kind of fear but kids pick it up so so quickly so i love the um kind of the the great unknown of you know what's next for technology and how it um you know factors into education and schools mm -hmm. there's that um you know kind of unknown that's exciting. Um, that's some, something that I certainly enjoy about the technology in, in schools. Um, but certainly from my end as a principal, uh, technology allows us to collaborate so easily. Mm. Um, I'm thinking about, um, you know, uh, Google Docs and oh, all, yes, you know, all the different Google apps that we use um, in our schools. It just makes the, you know, the ability for teachers and administrators and parents and kids to 
work together digitally. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's certainly one of the things that I, I love about technology right now. And, and one of the ways that I use it all the time is we're sharing documents, we're sharing you know, curriculum plans, we're sharing lesson plans, and we can do these things um, efficiently and, and seamlessly um, and collaborate on a wide level. Um, so that's certainly one way I use it. Another way, of course, is, is the communication piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing beats face-to-face, in-person communication, uh, but that's not always possible. You know, certainly phone calls would be the next priority. You know, talking on the phone, that's always not possible. And to reach, you know, a wide audience like I need to as, as a principal, um, whether it's through emails or the website or things like that, Technology certainly makes that easier, um, that I can communicate with, with parents and family members on, an, on, a, you know, a, a, on a broad level um, using technology. So that's certainly another way that uh, it impacts me on a daily basis. And, and the communications, as you mentioned, is so important, but also, too, maybe it plays a role. I was wondering about uh, safety and security at Hopkins. Everybody's mm -hmm. concerned about safety and security so. for students, yeah. right? Yeah. So. so maybe you could share us a little bit about safety and security at Hopkins and how? Sure. I mean, it, one of the things I ask kids often is, especially when, you know, at the beginning of the year, and I remind mm -hmm. them throughout the year, um, I ask them, you know, what, what do you think my, my the most important job I do is, and you know, I get kids. Well, you know, you help us learn, or you help us. You know, you, you, you know, if kids are misbehaving, they get in trouble. You know, those types of things. I <laughs> no. The 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 number one thing that I do as as a principal is maintain the safety and security of the kids, and staff members, or and anyone else who is working school, or visiting yeah. our schools. Um, safety and security is our, is is my number one priority, as it is with all of our teachers and staff members. Um, it's critical. Um, that's the first thing that we think about is, is safety and security. Um, and there's different levels of that. There's the, the physical safety and security, uh, you know, just maintaining, make, making sure that the building is safe um, and that our staff members and, and kids are safe physically. But there's also that emotional um, safety and security, making sure that people feel like they are in a safe place, they're they're respected. That uh, people are looking out for them and taking care of them, mm -hmm. um, and that's another critical part of my job. Um, you know, certainly it's 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 a different time um, than when you know most parents when they were in school, and that's that's a little bit of an adjustment. I think all parents can recognize and understand why things have changed the way that they have. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we would love to have open doors and have people coming and going, but that's just not the world we live in anymore. Um, so uh, making sure our building is, is a secure place is, is the number one thing that we do. Um, so when we ask parents to buzz in and, and state their business, and it's not because we, um, you know, we want to give anyone a hard time. It's because we want to make sure that our, our building and our kids are, are taken care of. Um, so we, we put layers of security in. Um, another thing that we've um, that that I, I would like to highlight and, and mention is something that we started last year as a district. We started talking about how to improve the safety and security of our buildings. We talked about um, enhanced lockdowns and enhanced evacuations and thinking about different ways that we might do things. Mm. Um, so that's something that we practiced at the end of the year that had really great results um, with our kids and our and our faculty. If we are ever in a situation, and, and let's hope that we never are, um, and I expect that we never will be, but it's we need to practice these situations mm -hmm. where we, um, where if there was ever a crisis situation, we want to make sure that our faculty um, and our students have as much information as possible to make some informed decisions about what they can do uh, to keep themselves safe and to keep you know each other safe. So we provide as much information rather than just having our, our, our kids and our faculty say, you know, lockdown and we lock ourselves into classrooms. We give them information about why we're in a lockdown or what the situation or what the crisis situation is. Mm -hmm. And then our staff members can lead our kids in making some smart decisions about whether we should stay in a lockdown and lock the doors and, and hide, whether we should barricade doors, whether we should evacuate. Our staff members are empowered to make those decisions. Um, and that's been, that was really well received by our teachers. It was really well received by our kids uh, because the, the common feedback is we feel like we're doing something to protect ourselves and mm -hmm. we're actively making some decisions about our own safety. Um, so that's, that's something that we, we started last year um, that's gonna be rolled out to all our, our school buildings in, in the coming year, so. 
Well, that's good to hear because, mm -hmm. like you said, the, uh, the kids feeling safe too is as important as they're actually being safe, and yeah. that goes a long way to making them feel like something's really being yeah. done. And that's part of our, our building our classroom communities. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, on a smaller level and a more you know local level at the classroom level is is making sure that kids know each other, they understand each other, they know about you know what we have in common, what's different about us. Mm -hmm. We get to know each other on, on, on a very personal level and that's part of our responsive classroom philosophy is, is who we are and getting to know the kids that we're teaching is just as important as what we're teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so that kids and teachers have relationships so that uh, when you know you have that personal connection, you have that personal understanding of one another, you're less likely to treat each other disrespectfully because you care about people and you're invested mm -hmm. in them. Uh, so making sure that our kids feel safe at the classroom level, you know, and thinking about something a little bit beyond the, the, the building level, at mm -hmm. that one-to-one -one inter, interpersonal relationship level uh, is critical to what we do as well. Well, that's probably one of the things that goes into, I was reading recently where the Hopkinton school system is now ranked in the top 10% of all districts in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Hopkins is given five stars out of five by parents, so that's a really good thing. What do you think are some of the programs that make Hopkins so successful? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's so much a pro, like programs. Mm -hmm. I think it's the culture. The culture. Of, yeah, the culture of our schools um, is one that we, um, our, our teachers first and foremost, mm -hmm. they are such dedicated, talented professionals. Um, they want to get better. They, you know, take all kinds of professional learning opportunities, whether it's classes or workshops. They they share and they collaborate uh, on best practices within classrooms. Uh, there is this. Um, you know, healthy competition among teachers to to do well and to excel and meet the needs of their kids, and that's the culture of our schools and has been for quite some time. Um, and that's regardless of you know whether it's center school or high school. We hear this you know, as as our administrators get together and, mm -hmm. and we talk about what's going on in our schools. Our teachers and the culture that they bring to the classroom is what makes the schools uh, what they are. Um, and certainly uh, that goes hand in hand is, is the support of the community. Um, you know, our schools are never, um, uh, are, are always supported by our parents in the mm -hmm. community, whether it's through the budget or through, uh, you know, extracurriculars and donations or, you know, our support organizations like HPTA and HEF and all the different groups and community uh, organizations that come together to support our schools and the mission of our schools. I think that's what makes Hopkinton what it is, and it kind of ties into what you, you led with at mm -hmm. the beginning of the program. Um, it's a special place where um, parents, commu the community, the schools are working together, and I think that's what makes you know, our, our school system as successful as it is. Uh, well, you mentioned many things yeah, there, parents, teachers, <laughs> students, organizations. Mm -hmm. How? I mean, it's not easy running an elementary school. How do you divide your time and how do you manage all of the responsibilities that you have interacting with all those people and organizations? Well, it's certainly one of the things that I love about the job is that um, there's, so, there's a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I go home and I'm exhausted every day. Um, and that's, uh, I, I love that about mm -hmm. the job. Um, I'm, uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically drained and, and I love that. It's, it's what makes it exciting. Um, certainly every day I go, you know, I start every day and as I start every week with a plan. And one of the great things, and you know, it's, it can be frustrating at times mm -hmm. uh, about an elementary school, is that all it takes is, you know, one student, one child, one event, one incident, and that whole plan that you had laid out for the day is best laid plans. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gone, and I and um, that's certainly an exciting part. Um, you don't know what every day holds. You can't ex you, you can't predict kids, as, as you know any any parent will tell you. Um, you can't predict what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And when you have you know over 500 of them in the building, something is bound to come up every day. Um, and so you know I, I I'm I feel like I'm I'm a very organized person. Um, you know, whether it's through scheduling my calendar and organizing the tasks that I have to complete and, and looking ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so I try and go into every week and every day with a plan as to what I need to get done. But I also know that at any moment, at any time, it can kind of 
uh, you know, disappear on me. The day can get away from us very quickly. Um, so, I, you know, I love that about a school. I, mm -hmm. There's many times I look up at the at the clock and it's it's two o'clock, and I'm like, where did the day where go? Day is it, yeah. Where did what happened? Very dynamic. Yeah, huh? what happened? <laughs> and it's um, yeah, another part that I, I love about being a principal, um, and one of the great things is that I get to um, be in all these different classrooms with all these different kids, with all these different teachers, and I can see all the little things that are going on, mm -hmm. and. Um, I like to think that I can have a little, you know, a little hand in everything that's happening. Um, maybe that's the control freak in me, and um, that I like to have, a, you know, my finger in a lot of different things. But mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I love to see all the different uh, things that are happening in our classrooms. It's just, it's, it's an exciting place to be. And, and elementary school is, is just, it's so busy. <laughs> So vibrant. Well, one of the things yeah. you must have your hands in is maintaining that wonderful faculty and, and support staff that you have. How do you find the excellent candidates that you do to, you know, when you have an opening at the school? Yeah, you know, it's, um, it, we were just talking about this the other day. We had an administrative meeting and mm -hmm. um, Mr. Bishop, the high school principal, mentioned that, you know, it's, it's one of the most important. It's if it's the most important thing that we can do, um, you know, besides the safety and security safety of the building. Too, yeah. But uh, hiring staff members is such a critical aspect of our job, um, and we have to do it right uh, because, you know, a, a student only gets one shot at fourth grade. Um, they only have you know, uh, PE in fifth grade one time, or you mm -hmm. know, I'm just you know, for example, mm -hmm. and. A teacher has such a profound impact on kids. It's something that they, you know, with with one lesson or one unit or just one comment that they make to a student, they can impact a kid, a, a child for forever. Um, and that ripple effect it has as as people network and make connections and the role of a teacher is so critical. So hiring the right person is something that we take extremely seriously. So I think it starts with having high expectations for what a teacher can do and what a teacher should be doing. Um, so interviewing and uh, screening people uh, is something that we take very seriously. We try and involve multiple members of the staff mm -hmm. um, so that whether it's you know the, the, the building principal, the assistant principal, other teachers, so that we get multiple viewpoints on um, bringing someone in. And we want to make sure we bring in the right person. Uh, so it's certainly we're asking, you know, very intelligent, thought-out uh, interview questions. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that we're looking to hear and looking to see uh, when we do demo lessons. We have teachers come in and and you know show us what they have in front of a room full of kids. Um, that's something else we we, we try and do. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of it is also that. Um, you know, you get that that kind of intuition, and you get that gut feeling of that chemistry. Yeah, yeah. whether that, that this is the right person yeah. or not. Um, yeah. You know, whether it's the twinkle in their eye or mm -hmm. the, you know just the way that they interact with kids. Um, but it's it's such a critical aspect of our job. Uh, we also know that you know teaching is a profession where people can stay in a position for. 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. um, and the impact that can have on a community is huge. Um, you know, we have teachers that here are, have been in Hopkinton for you know that length of time, and thinking about the numbers of kids that they have impacted is it's mind blowing. So you want to make sure you put the right person in that job because they have an impact on the community for could have a, the impact on the community for years to come. So. Yeah. Well, they certainly did a good job on my son. It's been a long time since he was at Hopkins or in the Hopkinton school system, but they did well, a good, good job with him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you said you like to interact with the teachers and the parents mm -hmm. and the students. Do you have any special advice for students on you know, how to be successful in elementary school? <laughs> well, I, I certainly, and it's something that I tell the kids right off the bat, um, is you know, we expect them to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the learning process. That's part of the growing process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want kids to take risks with their learning and, you know, try something that they haven't tried before and keep an open mind to different approaches to, you know, a specific skill or a strategy and try some things out and know that they're going to make mistakes. And it's okay. They don't have to be perfect all the time. They don't have to get everything right all the time. That part of learning is learning from those mistakes and trying something that they haven't done before. and. Um, you know, hear, listening and hearing from others 
uh, about the approaches that they've taken. So um, I encourage kids to make mistakes, um, as, as odd as mm -hmm. that might sound. It does a little, uh, but yeah, I understand. I want them yeah. to try different things. And as far as, you know, um, you know socially, it's, it's, you know, treating other people. And it's very simple. It goes back to a you know, very simple golden rule. You know, treat others the way you like to be treated. And I tell the kids every day, be good to each other. Um, and, you know, if you're good to other people, they're going to be good to you. And uh, at least that's the hope. <laughs> um, that's, that's a good message. Yeah, that needs reinforcing yeah, a lot. Yeah, be good to, each, and, and, <laughs> be good well, to each other and other people, yeah. And that's, some, you know, it's something I say every day in morning announcements. Uh, you know, I tell everyone to, you know, work hard, listen to others, and be good to each other. Mm -hmm. um, those are, you know, the three kind of things that I preach every day to the kids and hopefully it, it sticks with some of them um, uh, and makes makes their experience a successful one. Now when you're talking with parents about what's going mm -hmm. on with their children in school what what support do you and the faculty need from the parents? What do you tell them? Well I mean it was certainly we want parents to be active. We want mm -hmm. them to be involved. We want them to ask questions of of their teachers, mm -hmm. uh, their children's teachers. We want them to ask questions of their, of their kids and ask, you know, find out what's happening. Um, you know, I, I certainly expect and I want parents to be the number one advocate for their child. Um, and that's, that's the most important thing that they can do is advocate for their child and their child's needs. Um, you know, we, um, we certainly want parents also to, and this is kind of the fine line, is to let their kids struggle a little bit mm -hmm. at times. It's, and it's okay for, for kids to make mistakes. It's okay for them not to get it right the first time. It's okay to let them kind of find their way a little bit. So it's that balance of, you know, uh, taking care of and, and supporting their kids and being, you know, advocates for their kids, but at the same time, letting them struggle a little bit, whether it's with their learning or with their social, uh, with their social relationships, and kind of figuring it out and, you know, making some of those mistakes as I talked about earlier and learning from them and growing from them. Um, so. Uh, we want parents to um, to be involved. Uh, that's that's. Well, you're giving them a good yeah. message. I hope they're listening because you know one <laughs> thing: parents always want the, their kids to get A's on everything and yep. be the you know the top person in this sport. And there's sport absolutely the nothing thing. wrong with that. But you know, when, it's a lot of pressure on the yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's something that we see a lot. We see that kids are are feeling pressure and stress at a younger and younger age mm -hmm. every year. And there's certainly nothing wrong with high expectations. I have high expectations for our kids. I have high expectations for my own children. I mean, mm -hmm. I want them to do really well. And I, I want to support them and help them along the way. But when they're not getting something right away, it's OK for them to kind of fumble a little bit and mm -hmm. try some different approaches and make some mistakes and support them to find, you know, find the answer or, or, or get to where they need to be. Um, but you know, swooping in to to save and and to give them the answer and to you know make sure that they get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's that's not the best approach. So um, it's it's a balancing act as yeah. a as a parent of of supporting them and and doing everything you can to to make sure that they're as successful as they can be and and helping them be happy, but also letting them kind of find their own way and 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 figure things out for themselves as that's well. That's that's a great message. Yeah. I'm. When our audience is watching this, I hope that comes through loud and clear. But yeah, there's so many yeah. things you mentioned that you loved about being principal of the mm -hmm. school and, and the things that you do. Is there one thing that sticks out in your mind, though? What's most special to you about being principal of Hopkins? Or maybe uh, that's, can't narrow that down. I can't, it would be hard to narrow yeah, that down. Yeah. Um, I, certainly, I, I love to see um, when kids feel proud of themselves, mm. when they've you know they have that aha moment, or or they've made growth, and, and uh, you know they, they see a pretest and a post test, and they see mm -hmm. how far that they've come, or they look at you know they look back on their their year and reflect you know thinking about um, you know in June there's lots of teachers that were bringing out you know work samples from September, and to see kids like this is what how I was writing in September, and here's how I was writing in June, mm -hmm. and that that look of pride on their face, mm -hmm. and that um, you know when they want to show you like Mr. Kernan. To, you know, I look at this. I got a, I got a 90 on this test, and when I took the pretest, I got a, you know, I got a 60. And look at how much I've learned, and mm -hmm. that look and feeling of pride that you see in kids—that's certainly the highlight in, uh, of my day. I love that. Um, and there's so much change at that age, isn't it? When absolutely. they're going through elementary yeah. school, just, yeah, they absolutely. make leaps and bounds changes. It's yeah. just, yeah, yeah. That's something I, I enjoy. I love those personal relationships. Um, with kids and getting to know them on a personal level and supporting them on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I like that kids feel um, that I care about them, um, and you know, I love you know that they care about me as well. Um, you know, when they ask about me as a person, and the, to have that relationship with kids is mm -hmm. um, pretty special. Well, as we wrap up the show here, believe mm -hmm. it or not, we're almost at the end. I wanted to ask you: Is there something most rewarding about when a new school year starts? Um, I think it's uh, a couple. Again, that's a hard one to narrow down. Yeah. I think there's, you know, the unlimited possibilities of how that year is going to happen. I, I love, I love that kind of unknown. Mm -hmm. um, I like to see the um, how all the things that we put in place in preparation for the school year, how they start to unfold and um, how they start to uh, un, uh, you know, unroll throughout the, the school year, whether it's the, the meetings or the professional development plans or the things that we put in place for kids so that they're successful, to mm -hmm. see how those, those um, unfold throughout the year. Um, you know, certainly we're thinking ahead uh, every year about what are the things that we need to do to put kids in positions of success? So seeing how those things kind of unfold every year is, is certainly exciting. Well, continued success to you and the entire team at Hopkins you. School. You're doing a wonderful job. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. If you'd like to hear more about information about Hopkins Elementary School, visit their website located on the screen below. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. I'm Dr. Michael Thompson. Diabetes is one of the country's most prevalent chronic conditions, affecting nearly 29 million Americans. The disease is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and can lead to other serious conditions such as heart disease, blindness, kidney disease, and amputations. Another 86 million people, more than one in three Americans, are living with prediabetes, and nearly 90% of those are unaware of it. A person with prediabetes has a blood sugar level higher than normal but not high enough for a diagnosis of diabetes, and without lifestyle changes to improve their health, such as maintaining a healthy weight and getting regular exercise, many patients with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. Check with your doctor to get screened and tested, and act today. For more information, visit the American Medical Association at preventdiabetesstat.org.